Alrighty guys, what is up? What is up? Um, I'm gonna show you guys this this John Jones match that I had against a really, really, really good Tom Aspinall player. And uh, this is not live commentary, but I'm gonna uh, use this fight to uh kind of kind of describe why I really, really love using John Jones, especially in in five round fights. Um, because I, I've said before, where John Jones falls short, he definitely makes up in with his um with his with his health with his ability to withstand punishment with his ability to push opponents take him into deep waters and uh and pretty much drown him this is what we saw john jones do multiple times against other highly adapt fighters at doing that like dc for example fought daniel cormier twice um took daniel into deep waters the very first time um outlasted him and in the second fight of course he stopped him this is not something that people attributed to john jones you know it wasn't a skill that people thought john had you know for a long time people will look at john and, and think he is like just a pretty fighter you know the ballerina style fighter who just loves to spin loves to be flashy loves to be aesthetically pleasing with his style but very few people knew that he could also grind the man could get down and dirty even though he showed flashes of that throughout his career people quite didn't they didn't think he had the ability to do it, at least not to the level that someone like an Olympic wrestler would be able to do it. Um, but he showed that he can do it. And this game, UFC 4, does a very good job of representing that. Because if you take a look at Tom Aspinall and, and John Jones in the heavyweight division, Tom Aspinall is better than John Jones, hands down. He's better than John Jones in, in most stats that matter, right? I have their stats pulled up right here. If you go and take a look at their, their their striking, Tom Aspinall is working with a punch speed of 94. John Jones is working with a punch speed of 89. So there's there's a significant difference there. Um, Tom Aspinall is working with a punch power of 94. John Jones is working with a punch power of 86. So there's also a sig significant difference right there. Um, when it comes to accuracy, now um, John Jones is more accurate, which is good. Uh, when it comes to blocking, John Jones has better blocking, 95 to Tom Aspinall's 93. Um, head movement, they are pretty much the same. Footwork, they are the same. Um, switch stance, John has a 99 because, you know, of course he switches stances very well, so that's good. Um, Tom Aspinall's switch stance is a, a 90. Um, takedown defense, Tom Aspinall 92, John Jones a 94. And then when he goes to kick power, Tom Aspinall definitely, he has a higher kick power of 91. John Jones kick power of 88. And then kick speed, John beats him right there. John has a 95 in kick speed, and Tom Aspinall has a 92 in kick speed. Um, and so when I'm when I'm fighting a Tom Aspinall on the feet, I'm using I'm thinking of using mostly kicks, looking for opportunities to throw my kicks, long range kicks, um, you know, leg kicks, body kicks. I'm I'm looking to avoid boxing with him as much as possible because he will beat me to the punch way more than I can beat him to the punch. Um, now, you might say, why not just grapple him? Well, it's not that simple grappling Tom Aspinall either because if you take a look at their stats, Tom actually beats John Jones in a lot of the grappling aspects. Like, uh, when it comes to takedowns, Tom Aspinall actually has higher takedowns than John in the heavyweight division. He has a 93 takedown and John has a 92. His top control is 93 while John's top control is a 92 bottom control is where it gets big tom aspinall has a bottom control of 93 while john jones has a bottom control of 88 submissions tom aspinall also beats him at a 95 to so john jones is 94 submission defense tom aspinall beats him again submission defense of 95 to so john jones is 91 ground striking tom is a 92 john jones well john jones um beats him with ground striking which you know that that one makes sense john's a 96 to Tom's 92. Um, clinch striking, John also beats him there. 97 to Tom Aspinall's 90. And clinch control, John is a 96 to Tom's 92. Um, and so if you want to grapple, I, I suppose, you know, you'd have to use clinching, force them into the clinch with John Jones. But like, that's not my style. I hate doing that. I think it's ugly as hell in this game. And so I really don't do that. Where I focus most of my attention is playing a game where I force my opponent to work. Even if we are working at the same rate, or at a similar rate, 
I know that I'm going to outlast my opponent because of John Jones' stamina, because of his chin stats, because of his health stats in general. I know that as we start getting into round number four, round number five, no matter what work my opponent did at the earlier rounds, I will have enough in the tank to tip the scales and get him out of there. I do this all the time and I bank on it. I really bank on it. Right here, I don't even understand what the fuck happened. Um, none of us got rocked, but it sounded like I got ro I don't know. I don't know what happened right there. But you take a look at the health stats, right? We'll start with cardio. Tom Aspinall has a cardio of 90. John Jones has a cardio of 97. All right? This this is this shows you that's a massive difference, okay? 97 to 90. You might not think it's a big difference, but it it makes a big difference, especially when you use John Jones the way that I do. I can conserve that stamina way late into the into the rounds and it pays off big time. It really does. Um Chen Tom Aspinall has a chin of 94. John Jones has a chin of 97. So that means that he can rock me way, way more times. Um, I can survive rocks way more than he can. So if he rocks me three times, I probably only need to rock him twice and I'm going to get him out of there. And so he needs to be a very good finisher for him to get me out of there if he rocks me while I'm using John Jones. And I'm banking on that. And you see, he's rocking me, but I'm not giving him even an inch of space i'm not showing him any signs of weakness i'm not showing him that i am oh my god you just rocked me multiple times like oh well, you know what am i gonna do like no i'm still right in his face and pushing him and this creates a sense of like dread in the opponent i promise you like it it it, it really does because it makes him go like he can clearly see he's getting tired um his head his health is probably going down little by little and he, he starts to think in his head, all right, if I don't get this dude out of here soon, in the later rounds, this might get bad. Like, you see me right there, right in his face, the whole entire time. Um, body health. Tom Aspinall has a body health of 90. John Jones has a body health of 92. Um, for the legs, surprisingly, Tom has a leg health of 92, and John Jones has a leg health of 88. But the big one, another big one, is in recovery. Right there, he drops me. Whatever, don't care. I'm gonna stand right back up. He rocks me again. I'm gonna stand back up and I'm just gonna march him down like a fucking zombie. Cause I just know, I just know that I'm, I just need to find one or two rocks and he's gonna be done. Um, recovery is, the, is an, another big one. Tom has a recovery of 92. John has a recovery of 96. And so this sort of paints, uh, it paints a, pretty clear picture of uh of why I, I tend to use john the way that i do um in the light heavyweight division it's it's it can it can even get worse like it can genuinely get worse in the light heavyweight division um do i like a situation where i can i have the better striking skills and i can outstrike my opponent from bell to bell yeah but right there i rock him i'm gonna sit him down against the cage right here yeah, that left hook sets him down, and then right here, this is where it starts to slowly get bad. Um, I like being able to, I like being able to, I'll strike my opponent with John, just style on them, hit them when they can't hit me. But if you're facing someone that knows what they're doing, if you're facing a good player and you're using a faster fighter, a fighter that's I'd say more comfortable to use, like Tom Aspinall is more comfortable to strike with than John Jones. If you're facing someone that knows how to use a fighter like this. You're gonna get rocked, man. You're gonna get rocked multiple times. Um, you're gonna get battered. You're gonna get caught. You're gonna get caught before you can catch them. But you need to just understand that as long as you don't do a bunch of dumb shit that gets you finished. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. I end up getting finished while using John because I'm like I'm playing stupid. But I, as long as you don't do anything dumb that gets you finished, and it's a five round fight. Um, as you get deeper into the rounds, it's going to start tilting in your favor, 100%. So, right here, we're on the ground. Um, he's holding top position. None of, Neither of us are really trying to risk much. But right there, he actually passes, immediately passes to uh, side control. I take advantage of the momentum transition right there. 
get to uh get to sprawl stand up i knew he was gonna try to release and do that yeah and so i didn't want him to get an easy rock at the end right there so i just i just held high block and now the next round is next round's about to start you notice this man striking is, is also pretty damn good he's staying in southpaw um i don't know exactly why he wanted to stay in southpaw um i think he would have probably done a better job in in orthodox but perhaps the player is just more comfortable in southpaw right there right there I, I start i start to slowly rock him also you'll notice when i'm using john around round four round five is when i start using the spinning elbows and the elbows and there's a reason for that i don't want to key in my opponent that i want to throw spinning elbows at him you know, i and and that's also the john jones way if you watch his fight against alexander gustafson this is his this is his high percentage shot this is his hail mary spinning elbows and the elbows when he was losing badly against gustafson his elbows is what saved him in that fourth round he used a spinning elbow to badly badly rock gustafson and almost got him out of there as i get this man out of there in round number four with an elbow and, and and because of that when i'm using john i i typically save my elbows i i save them for those later rounds that's when I, I'm like, okay, like, I'm going to save it. In the later rounds, that's when we're going to uh, start using the elbows. But yeah, that is it, man. That is it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Just wanted to do another John Jones fighter showcase. Show you guys how I use him and sh show, uh, post a showcase where his health stats genuinely saves me. And uh, show you guys why I say what I say in regards to his health stats. So. Hope that helps you as you're trying to use John. If you're gonna use John Jones, man, just use him properly. Or I don't know, fucking elbow, knee elbow spam like you all, like like you always do. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. If you enjoyed the video, go right ahead and leave a like on it, and uh, I will see you guys later. As always, stay safe. Peace out. Have a good one.